Hey guys, welcome back to People of the Way podcast. This is Dylan. And this is Dylan. And we are D Square. Are you a good steward of the things the Lord has given you? Because we're about to find out. Because today's podcast is about stewardship. So before we continue, let's actually look at, let's hop in and look at what the Greek word for stewardship is. Um, the Greek word is oikonomia, meaning management of property or administration of household or estate. And real, real quick, real quick side note on that. Um, I think it's really cool that the Greek word for stewardship is oikonomia because we're called to be good stewards of our things here on earth. Um, and one of the Greek words for world is oikumene, meaning earth and its inhabitants. Um, they seem they seem to kind of be like of the same root um, in, in regards to things of the earth. Um, so I think that's just super cool. Um, anyways, let's check out Luke 16. Oh, I'm sorry, not Luke 16. Oh, wait, what's that? Yeah, yeah, Luke, Luke 16, 16 too. Yeah, my bad. Um, so it's going to be, so he called him and said to him, what is it I hear about you? Give an account of your stewardship for you no longer can be a steward. So in this, this is a parable that Jesus is telling the disciples. And it's interesting because uh, this is about a uh, steward that's about to lose his job as a manager. And he goes and he, he starts uh, slashing the prices of the things that, uh, that, that the people owe his master. Um, to try to to try to gain good favor with them, so when he is fired, he can move into their houses and stuff. Because he made it very clear that this this steward is not a very good person, not a good laborer, not a, not a good anything. And obviously, we've seen here he's not a good steward either because right. he's he's trying to cheat the system. And it's interesting here because in this parable, um, the Pharisees overhear him and they get and Jesus, they overhear Jesus and they get kind of upset. And that's where Jesus kind to kind of goes into it and. And tells them, if you aren't a good steward of earthly things, how would you ever be trusted with heavenly things? It goes back to that back to that concept of if you're faithful in in a little, the Lord will allow you to be faithful in a lot. But if you can't be trusted with the worldly things, you certainly can't be trusted with the kingdom kingdom things. Right. Um, that moves us to um, Titus one seven through nine, and if the other Dylan wants to hit that up. Yeah, so before we do that, a quick thing here. Um, not only are we called to be good stewards of our earthly possessions, but we're also called to be good stewards of the Word of God. Um, and uh, one who is a good steward of these things is one who is described in Titus um, 1, 7 through 9. Um, it basically says, I'll give you a quick like thing. Uh, it basically says, a good steward is someone who's not blameless, who's not overbearing, who's not quick-tempered, who's not given to drunkenness, who's not violent, who's not pursuing dishonest game, who's, who is hospitable, one that loves what is good, one that is self-controlled, upright and holy, one that is disciplined, um, one that holds firmly to a trustworthy message, and one that encourages others by sound doctrine. Um, so that, that just gives like a good good like description of what a steward should look like right and when we look at stewardship it if you look in scripture there's not a whole lot like you're not going to find the word steward or stewardship in a lot of places so it's a little harder to really dig out of there uh, but when you think about being a good steward it's it's almost um as he said it's, it's about managing things well so we have to look at this on a level because scripture says that everything that's good comes from the lord so do we manage everything that comes from the Lord well? That means our households. That means our families. That means our, our time. Um, one of the... Our money. Our money, our finances, all of that. One of the coolest um, messages that I, I've actually heard preached on stewardship um, was from a buddy of mine. His name's Austin. Um, he preached this message uh, at a men's breakfast about stewardship, and I have never seen somebody so moved about the concept of stewardship, and his big thing he ended with was being a good steward of your time, because you can always make more money, you can always clean your house and, and, and things, but the one thing that if you're a poor steward of that you can't get back is time, um, because it's it's literally constantly fleeting from us, well, you know, gone in a flash. That snap was in the past. Right. So. It, it's, it's constantly moving. So... I, I was very moved um, by him, just seeing how emotional he was regarding um, this concept of being a good steward in everything that we do, not just 
not just finances or, or just one part of your life, but in every aspect, yeah. including your time. Um, and that honestly moves us to um, Colossians 1 verse 25 that says, I have become its servant by the commission or stewardship God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness. And that really, when we look at that, God has given us a ministry, uh, it's mentioned in scripture a few times, a ministry of reconciliation. That's one of the things that we're called to minister. Um, we've got the mysteries of Christ and all these other things, but a ministry of reconciliation. And that's just one of the things that we've been given that we should be stewarding. Um, so it's important to realize it's not just earthly things that you, we should be stewarding, stewarding well, but we should be stewarding spiritual things also, but there is something to, to note. It's really hard to, to be a good steward in, in spiritual things if you're not a good steward in the physical things. Right. Um, we want to read scripture out of Matthew 25, 14 through 30, and I'm actually going to have the other Dylan read it, um, if he doesn't mind, and then we'll talk about it. Yeah, it says, For it is just like a man about to go on a journey, who called his own slaves and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, each according to his own ability, and he went on his journey. Immediately the one who had received the five talents went and traded them and gained five more talents. Um, in the same manner, the one who had received the two talents gained two more. But he who received the one talent went away and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. Now, after a long time, the master of the slaves came and settled the, the accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came up and brought five more talents, saying, Master, you entrusted five talents to me. See, I have gained you five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant or slave. You were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Also, the one who had received two talents came up and said, Master, you entrusted two talents to me. See, I have gained two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant or slave. You were faithful with the few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one who had received the one talent came up and said, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered, scattered no seed. And I was afraid. So I went away and hid your talent in the ground. See, you see, I have what is yours. But his master answered and said to him, You wicked, lazy slave, you knew that I reap where I did not sow, and gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have put my money in the bank, and on my arrival I would have received my money back with interest. Therefore take he took away the talent from him and gave it to the one that has ten talents, for... To everyone who has more shall be given, and he shall have an abundance. But from the one who does not have, even when he does have, shall be taken away, throw thrown into, or throw out the worst of slave, into the outer darkness. And in that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So it's a long parable. This is a parable. By the way, a parable is a, a physical or an earthly example of a spiritual thing. So so Jesus tells these parables because these are carnal-minded people who he's trying to get from from here to there. Um, so he, And he does it great. And they, they still work today. They really do. It's a great parable. This is the parable that's typically quoted um, when we're talking about uh, being a good steward of things. Um, it's interesting that these are called talents. Um, because I think it, in our in our heads, talent means something different than it did then. Of course, we're talking about coins here. Um, in our heads, we're like, I can play guitar. That's that's a talent, which is good. It's a good talent. Nothing wrong with that. Um, but it's it's important to understand when we're looking at this. The Lord has given each and every one of us that are following Him, that are faithful to Him. Uh, we've been given spiritual gifts. We've been given things to be good stewards of. Um, and this parable makes it very clear that we should be working in those and we should be using those to multiply the kingdom, to encourage one another and build the body of Christ up. Um, we cannot, we cannot lay around in fear because if we do that, one day we're going to be faced with that and we're going to have to answer for our lack of stewardship. It's a big deal. It, we should be stewarding the things the Lord has given us. 
It's like, imagine if I gave Dylan here a really nice Lamborghini. Mm -hmm. I spent all this money, and what he would do every day, he'd go outside, he'd sit in that Lamborghini, and he'd listen to the radio. Now, he'd crank it up real loud, he'd jam, he'd get some Lauren Daigle going or something, but um, that's all he would do. Well, one day I'm going to come back and go, hey, how, 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 have you, how have you enjoyed that Lamborghini? Does it drive nice? Does it, is, are, is the suspension good? Is it fast? And I'm going to say, oh, it has good music. Yeah, he's going to go, well, the radio works really well. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go, that's not what that's for. Like, like what, do you, what do you mean the radio? Of course, it's, it's, an, it's a nice addition to the, to the vehicle, but that's not the main job of the vehicle. The main job of the pe of vehicle is to get you from A to B to C to all over the place. It's a nice luxury yeah. vehicle. It's the same thing for us. He's also going to ask me, like, oh, have you not driven it? And I'm like, no, I've been too scared to drive it. Right. I don't want to mess it up. I know that you're you're a hard man, so right. I knew you'd be upset if something happened. It's like, well, I'm even more upset that you haven't used it for the intention that I bought it for. And the same thing for us. We could live in fear that we might mess up. We might we might misspeak using the spiritual gifts. We might completely just blow it. And the Lord's going to ask us one day, well, why did you not use what I gave you? Right. What what are you doing? You're supposed to be going out making disciples of all nations, building up the church, equipping the church, and you 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 were so scared. That you just sat there and just read your Bible or something. And, and which is good, but right. like it's more than that. We're called to be good stewards of not only the physical things that the Lord gives us, our money, our, fi our, our finances, our families, all of those things, but good stewards of of the spiritual things as well. We should be walking in these in these spiritual gifts and this love and this compassion and we should be moving and constantly growing instead of being stagnant and sitting here waiting for the Lord to come back because we're not supposed to just be sitting here waiting for him to come back we're supposed to be acting we're supposed to be out in the world being examples of who he is and bringing as many people as we can with us when he does come back that I think about this all the time I really do when I go to do something Regardless of what it is, I, I have this thought in the back of my head that goes, is this what I want to do? When Is this what I want to be caught doing when Jesus comes back? And it pushes me to be a better steward of not only the time that I have, but the things that I'm doing. Yeah, because he's going to come back like a thief in the night, so no one's going to know when. So right. you, know, you got to always be doing diligent. something. Yeah, diligent about doing something that... You would brings him glory yeah, exactly, and, and 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 that's not like a legalistic thing. Like, hey, don't don't you ever do like anything that you have fun doing? It's like no one. We should find joy in the things of the Lord and all of that. But it's I really do think about that a lot. Of like, man, am I being a good steward enough where I'm ready for him to come back? I think about the parable. It's actually right before this parable um, that talks about the uh, I think it's like the ten virgins and their oil lamps. You've got the fine virgins that, you know, they, they've got their thing of oil, they've got their wick, their, their wicks trimmed, they're, they're ready to go for them to be invited into the wedding feast. They're ready. As soon as, Prepared for the journey. Yeah, as soon as, soon as, soon as they, he says go, they're ready. And then you've got the five who really haven't prepared. They haven't been good stewards of the time they had to prepare. Um, and... They still had an oil, a lamp. Yeah, they had a lamp. They just didn't. They, 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 they didn't, didn't have enough oil. They, they weren't prepared. Right. So when when they when they when they had gotten to where they needed to be, they're like, "Oh man, like, can I borrow some of your oil?" And they're like, "No, we have just 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 enough for ourselves." So they go back to go get more oil. And when they go back, they're, the other five are invited to the wedding feast, and the other five that had been poor stewards of their time, poor stewards of the things that they needed to prepare for. They were not able to go in. They were left out there. And that's a shame, but it, it still it pushes me to go, man, I need to be a good steward of everything, including the time and the gifts that the Lord has given me. Um, and you have to ask yourself, hmm, how do I do this? How am I a good steward of, uh, of that? How do, I, how do I put that into action? Right. And I think you can't do this, and, and we've discussed this. You cannot be a good steward of, of all the things the Lord has given us if you're not disciplined. And this is a place where I struggle in my life of being disciplined in everything that I do. But again, if you're not disciplined in the things of the world, you'll never be disciplined in the things of the world, uh, in the things of the Lord. And if you are disciplined in the things of the Lord, 
and the rest of your life is falling apart, you're going to be absolutely exhausted in every moment of every day because you're literally having to fight tooth and nail to, to even keep what you have. Um, so that's why the second part of this podcast that we're getting, we're getting ready to get into is going to be on discipline because without discipline, it's impossible to be a good steward. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, some people may wonder, um, well, how do we be diligent about, about being good stewards of our, of our belongings, um, other people's belongings, um, and the commands of the living word of God? Um, well, that brings us again to the second to- second part of the of the topic for today uh, is dis- discipline. Um, we must deny ourselves daily, um, which then uh, translates to also forget our own interests daily. Right. Um, as shown in Luke nine twenty three, uh, it says, "Then he said to them all, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me." So we can. We can also find a really great a great group of scriptures known as the need for self discipline in the NIV Bible. Um, it's also known for it's also called striving for a crown um, in the uh, New King James version. Um, so that grouping of scripture is found in First Corinthians nine twenty four through twenty seven, um, and it says, "Do you do you not know that in a race all runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games." goes into strict training, which is discipline there, goes into discipline. Um, They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Um, Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my own body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Um, and I think that's a good good scripture because it also relates to Galatians 2.20 where it says, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me, that we have been crucified with him. Um, so we need to have our, have our our beat our flesh into submission so that we can do the things of the Lord. Right, because it's important, you know, we're talking about stewardship here and the need for discipline to be a good steward. But it's important to realize that as a Christian, you, it's hard to be a believer without discipline. We're called to have discipline as this clearly puts out that we're, we're called to beat our flesh into submission and and continue to die to oneself so we can look more like jesus and it's very very difficult to do that if you're not disciplined and like i said i struggle in this i'm not sitting here going man i'm great i've, I've got all the discipline lord i don't um i meet with a mentor pretty regularly talking about this struggle of being disciplined and and eating right and praying and, and getting up in the morning and spending that intimate time with the lord and you know, I've, I've got a very busy life where I'm ministering to people all the time and I'm, I'm blessed to do it, but I still struggle with discipline. Um, now, do I feel condemned because of that? No, but I know that I need to continue to pursue that because without discipline, you can't be sanctified. You, there's no sanctification if there is no diligent in seeking that process of sanctification. Um, and without sanctification, the scripture says that no one will see the Lord. Right, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm the same way. Like, I I also struggle with discipline in many areas. Um, however, that, that has been my strive um, for a little while now is I want to be a good steward of the things that I have. Um, and that could just literally just be like making sure your house stays clean, um, be, being disciplined and reading the Bible, studying it, um, and and preaching yeah, the Bible. And preaching, yeah. And, yeah, and, being, and preaching the truth. Yeah, not only being a hearer of the word, but a doer of the word. So, yeah, we're, we're not saying, like, oh, like, we totally got discipline down. We got stewardship down. Like, you guys are bad. We just know the yeah. importance of it. Right. We just want you to know the importance of it. Yeah, because we're all in this t- together. We're, we're, we are the people of the way. And the way is difficult. But yeah. you can't do the way. You can't follow the way. Jesus is the way if we're not disciplined, picking up our cross and following him. Um, there's another scripture in James chapter one, verse 12, blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. We're talking about sanctification here. Those who withstand and persevere under trial because they stood that test, that person will receive the crown of life that that the Lord gives to those who love him. When we're diligent in our lives and we continue to seek the Lord and we die to oneself and we seek him, especially when things are get, when, when things are di- difficult, we should yeah, seek, seek him. Seek him when everything. you're good, when everything's going good, but I'll, I'll definitely seek him when things are right. hard. We should be seeking him this, uh, in, in every moment, yeah. but you won't be able to get through the hard stuff unless you seek him. Mm-hmm. Um, so 
if once we come through that and we're diligent in seeking him, we do receive the crown of life, which is eternal life, because we do love him and we serve him. And that's pr the proof of that is us being disciplined and diligent in seeking him. Uh, my last podcast or the two podcasts ago, I mentioned the scripture. It's actually Hebrews 11, 6, not Hebrews 11, 16. My bad. Um, but we, that scripture says, you must first believe that God is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. My homeboy knows it. <laughs> said it too many times, I guess. But like, if that doesn't tell you the importance of discipline and being diligent in this walk with the Lord, I don't know what it does. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Just as this scripture here is saying, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. It's the same concept. We diligently seek the Lord, and we're diligent about being good stewards of what he's given us. So one day we can stand before him and go and hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. That's what that's my goal. That's yep. what I want to hear. Um, because I don't want to hear the other part. I don't <laughs> I don't want to get up there and go hear him hey, go Hey Lord, like I was lazy, sorry about that. I I don't want to get up there and go, sorry, I just played with the radio a lot. Like that like that's that's it. I I, I don't want that. I want him to go, You steward what I gave you well. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter, Enter into, into my joy. joy. Yep. Enter into my joy. That's what I want to hear. Yep. And that's what we should all want to hear. Um, yeah, and without that discipline, um, there's no way for us to walk out. Colossians 3.17, um, which says, Whatever we do in word, word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So that's just another reason why discipline is super important. So. Right, and, and we want to end with this scripture here out of Second Timothy, and I'll, I'll read it here. It says, I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with great patience and instruction. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires, and will turn away their ears from the truth, and will turn aside to myths. But you... But you be sober-minded in all things, endure hardship, and do the work of an evangelist, and fulfill your ministry. You cannot be a good steward of those things without discipline, and you can't walk those out without diligently seeking the Lord. Amen. And as always, Jesus agape, agape is you, we agape, agape you. you. We'll see, see you next time. time. Hey guys, real quick, I just wanted to say um, back uh, at the beginning of the podcast when we were talking about Titus, um, I accidentally misspoke and I said um, a good steward is not blameless. I meant to say a good steward is blameless. So I just wanted to clear that up with you guys so there's no confusion. Um, so I hope that helps. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, Jesus, Jesus agape is you. you. We agape you. See you, you next time. time.